today we're going to show the proper techniques for bonding a 5145 uh, miniature sensor to a circuit board for circuit board testing. The location we're hoping to put the gauge down is at the corner of this ball grid array. The first thing we'll do is take the CSM3, the degreaser, spray it into a gauze sponge, and then degrease the area where I'm going to be putting the gauge. This takes any of the finger oils or gross contamination away. The next step, I'm going to locate the 400 grit SCP3 silicon carbide abrasive paper and I'm going to dry abrade, braid the surface. We're just trying to take the shine off the, the part and make the surface the appropriate roughness for bonding and also remove any gross contamination. Now since I'm putting it on the corner I'm having to kind of slide up to the edge here with the paper. <clears throat> the next step would be to use the same 400 grit silicon carbide abrasive paper with the conditioner A and wet a braid. This, the organic, the uh, mild phosphoric acid solution here helps to remove the organic contaminants and further get the surface prepared for bonding for a proper roughness. I'm now going to take a clean dry gauze sponge and absorb that contaminated conditioner A a little slurry of debris left behind. And then the next step will be to, I've oh, got a little bit extra conditioner on the back of this all grid array, we don't want that. Next step will be to locate a cotton tip applicator, the CSP1, and conditioner A. Again, flooding the surface with the conditioner A. And then scrub with the cotton tip applicator. You'll notice it'll come up a little dirty. Take the dry gauze sponge and absorb the excess conditioner A that has the contamination entrained in it. The last step of surface preparation will locate the Neutralizer 5A, the Bopeep ammonia solution. This will bring the pH back to nominally either neutral or slightly basic and do the final cleaning operation before we bond the gauge. Again, flood the area with the Neutralizer 5A and then scrub thoroughly. Using a clean dry gauze sponge, absorb the Neutralizer 5A. You don't want to let that stuff dry on the surface because it does, it'll just leave contaminants behind. So now we're prepared to bond the gauge. I'm going to slide the circuit board slightly out of the way here. I have this glass plate. I'll take a clean dry gauze sponge couple of drops of Neutralizer 5A on the glass to chemically clean it. We don't want to contaminate the gauge right before we bond it to the surface. Allow the surface to fully dry. You don't want to have the Neutralizer 5A uh, potentially contaminating the backing of the gauge, so I'm going to take a dry gauze sponge, just wipe that excess away. Now I need to very carefully, because this is a very small strain gauge and somewhat fragile, very carefully remove it from the packaging. Now be care very careful here as the, the fragile nature of this, we won't, don't want to damage it, so I'm going to take it out and very carefully lay it out. Whoops. On my glass plate shiny side up. If you have the dull side exposed, then you'll end up not being able to bond the gauge properly. I'm going to just leave that there at this point. Take some of the MJG2, the Mylar tape. Now if I'm going to take the assistance of my colleague here, Colin, to hold down the leak gauge, I'm going to put the tape transverse to the long axis of the gauge due to alignment here. And then at a shallow angle, I'll pick up the gauge off of this surface and then transfer it to my bonding surface on the circuit board itself. Note I'm being very careful not to damage the fairly fragile uh, lead wire interface. Positioning the gauge where I want it to end up. 
I'm also going to take another piece of the Mylar tape just for cheap insurance and hold the lead wire down just in case somehow I disturb this lead wire. I don't want to yank the strain gauge out of position prematurely. So this helps to stabilize the gauge in installation. I'm now going to again at a shallow angle lift the gauge handling tape until I just expose the bonding surface of the gauge. Taking the neutralizer, or excuse me, the catalyst C, the catalyst for the M Bond 200. On the inside of the neck of the bottle, I'm going to hit it eight or ten times. I'm getting rid of most of this material off the brush. And then I'm going to lightly wet the backing of the strain gauge. I allow this to air dry for one full 60 second minute. Don't trust your brain, trust your watch. Just to give you a little more information about the, uh, the 5145 uh, pattern, it's a miniature linear pattern designed specifically for use in circuit board testing. We also have a three element rosette of similar size uh, that will be demonstrated po possibly in a later video. I now have my 60 seconds of air dry time. I'm going to take the, the M Bond 200 remove the cap, have a gauze sponge at the ready, lift the gauge handling tape, and put a single drop at the cusp of the gauge handling tape in the circuit board. Squeegee it over with the gauze sponge, and then follow with my thumb. I'm going to press down firmly anomaly about a third of a white thumbnail if you have your uh, if you can see the thumbnail and I'm going to hold it for a full 60 second minute again don't trust your brain trust your watch your your brain's in a hurry after the 1 minute of thumb pressure and then 2 minutes under the tape we're now going to remove the gauge handling tape I'm going to pull it 180 degrees back on itself to put the adhesive into shear as opposed to peel. And then we'll do a close visual inspection of the strain gauge, making sure that it looks fairly uniformly bonded. And best I can tell, it appears to be okay. The proof will be in the pudding. If we put it onto the, the uh, instrument and it doesn't respond properly, then we might not have it bonded properly. As with in any, any strain gauge installation, after we've bonded the gauge and we've tested it out electrically, we need to put down an environmental protection. In this particular case, on a circuit board, a fairly benign environment, we're going to use our M Code A. It's a polyurethane material, air dries in about 24 hours. Just a single coating over the gauge in the lead wire system. Again, as I said, you have to let it air dry. In about 15 to 20 minutes, the solvents, the xylene that's the solvent associated with this, will pretty much evaporate. But for full cure, it takes 24 hours. The M Code A is fully cured now, and so we want to check out our uh, installation uh, mechanically. So the first thing we need to do is balance out any initial imbalance. I'm now set up with zero micro strain, and I'm going to load the circuit board and check for zero return. And it's coming back to zero quite well. One micro strain among friends is zero, but it creeps back to zero. So I can load it up fairly substantially and get a linear and repeatable response for a linear and repeatable input with good zero return. Based on this, it appears our strain gauge is properly bonded in place, and we can do our uh, final testing of the actual test, whether it's an impact or a bed and nails test or insertion of the circuit board into a uh, cabinet. All of those things can induce strain on these surface mount components, which is uh, one of the primary concerns of the circuit board manufacturers.